How does a prodigy climber and D student become a tenured MIT professor on the cutting edge of bionic prosthetics? Born in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, young Yu Hare was way more interested in climbing than school. By eight, he had scaled the face of the 11,620-foot Mount Temple in the Canadian Rockies. By 17, he was one of the best climbers in the United States. After a technically difficult ice climb on Mount Washington in New Hampshire, Hare and a friend were trapped in a blizzard. After three nights reaching minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, they were rescued, but each suffered severe frostbite, and one of the rescue workers died in an avalanche. Both of Hare's legs had to be amputated below the knee. Hare faced multiple surgeries and agonizing rehabilitation. A month or so afterward, I went to a rehabilitation center, and for the first time, I was given artificial limbs, and they were made of plaster Paris and wood and plastic and rubber. And and I said to myself, you've got to be kidding. And in the day and age of space travel and the internet, this is what society has to offer, so. He realized early on that his prosthetic was now an appendage with infinite possibilities. He developed a series of specially shaped prosthetics, each with unique capabilities beyond those of the human foot. These prosthetics not only eliminated his disability, but now gave him a competitive advantage. Hare went on to get a master's degree in mechanical engineering at MIT, followed by a PhD in biophysics from Harvard. Called the leader of the bionic age by Time magazine, Yu Hare is co-founder of the Lisa K. Yang Center for Bionics at MIT. Hare's multidisciplinary research team is focused on emulating the human leg and even surpassing it. Biomechanical ankles, knees, and hips all have their particular challenges requiring innovations in the mechanical attachments to the human body, synthetic skins, and the mechanical engineering of the prosthesis nervous system interface. The prosthetic itself is only one component of the biomechanical equation. It's extremely important that the prosthetic is able to understand the instructions from the brain and vice versa. Hare's lab is constantly working on advancements in transdermal sensors as well as experimenting with nerve cells grown physically through mechanical sensors. His team recently pioneered a new kind of amputation surgery in which pairs of opposing muscles like triceps and biceps are connected together, giving the patient more sensory feedback. Aside from returning mobility to those with amputations, Hare intends that his innovations improve the performance of able-bodied people. His team has designed exoskeletons to make people stronger, delay fatigue, and prevent biological joint wear. Hare is helping usher in an age where machines attached to our bodies will make us physically stronger, faster, and more efficient by rethinking bionic body parts from the ground up. He is the author and co-author of more than 150 peer-reviewed manuscripts, chronicling the science and technology behind his many innovations several of which were recognized as Time Magazine Top 10 Inventions. In addition, Hare has 106 patents that are either granted or are pending. Other accolades include the 13th Annual Heinz Award for Technology, the Economy and Employment, the Prince Solman Award for Disability Research, the Smithsonian American Ingenuity Award in Technology, the 14th Innovator of the Year Award, the 41st Inventor of the Year Award, and the 2016 Princess of Asterius Award for Technical and Scientific Research. Hare believes that people have the right to live life without disability if they so choose. For his mission to overcome his own disability and create a profound difference in other people's lives around the world, we are pleased to recognize you here tonight as a Liberty Science Center genius. isolation. Uh, I'd like to thank um, all the inspiration that I've received from scientists and technologists, um, dead and alive, 
I'd also like to um, thank, from my heart of hearts, my many uh, students and postdocs for all their hard work and fantastic ideas. And of course, I'd like to thank my loving family, my partners here tonight, Ray Connor, and my three children, Alex, Sage, and Ashton. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about what I'm thinking about now. Um, as you saw in the video, we recently established the K. Lisa Yang Center for Bionics at MIT. What we want to do is advance the science and technology of human augmentation. We want to build bionic limbs that are so integrated into human physiology that they become part of human identity. That the person, when you ask them, what is your body, they, they include the design construct. We also want to increase the actual distribution of bionic technology in developing countries. Our first mission is in Sierra Leone, Africa, where we want to increase by an order of magnitude the number of prostheses that are available to the, the war victims um, in that country. Now we estimate there's 25,000 people in the country with major limb loss, and only 50 limbs are built each and every year, so most go without. So again, thank you so much for this fantastic award, and enjoy your evening, thank you. Thank you, dude. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it.